First job of the day, folks. 2006 Chevrolet. It's a Trailblazer. That's the short one. And uh, customer complaint on this. Eh, can't get the door here. There we go. Is the uh, traction control light comes on when he tries to take off with it. Kind of delays the vehicle from taking off. Puts a little hitch in its giddy up. And then uh, every time he pulls up to a stop sign, the brake pedal kicks back at him. Let's see. If we can find the day link connector here. There it is. And we're gonna take and turn the key on. We'll get this thing auto ID'd because it is my suspicion that it has a um, wheel speed sensor going bad. So pretty kind of problem on General Motors here. This is ID'd. We're gonna go right into the ABS. Get our fingers work here. Didn't bring a pointing apparatus. And we'll see, uh, I guess first of all, I guess we can see if there's any codes. There's no lights on the dash or anything, but perhaps it flagged an erratic speed sensor code. Uh, let's see, bunch of history codes. Um, nothing, we'll just keep them there. Like I say, with the engine running, there's no, no lights on or anything. But the little traction light will flash when we go to take off with it. So like I say, I suspect we have a wheel speed sensor going wonky so let me get these up in a graph so we can see because it's going to be a low speed activation let's just take and pull her outside here and then we'll have a look see if any of them are working currently the rears are i suspect it's both of the fronts and the reason i say that is i drove it yesterday uh, before I pulled it inside, just left it inside overnight because it's out of parking spots. But I drove it yesterday, and when the ABS activates, the steering wheel doesn't pull one way or the other, it just goes straight. I'll show you what I mean. It's kind of an okay, see, so there's a traction light that just started flashing. Um, I'll show you, it's kind of an old school trick to see which wheel speed sensor is dropping out. So you get up to speed, and as you slow down, you let go of the steering wheel. And when the ABS kicks on, usually the steering wheel will tip one way or the other, but this way the steering wheel just doesn't, it doesn't move. Which usually indicates, you know, possibly both speed sensors or one of the rears. Um, it's not a 100% tried and true method, but it is one that you can kind of quick and dirty, um, you know, use. So let's just get over here. Let's just creepy crawl down. So you guys heard the pump kick on there, and it looks like our left front is the is the culprit. Um, tell you what, let's get here where we can get a better view at our monitor. It's gonna shadow on that thing so we can see it a little better. Here, this would be a little easier for us. I just went ahead and just recorded my drive. So let me uh, show you guys this here. We can have a look at this this here for us let's see we'll hit play so you can see right here currently I'm taking off I'm going about six miles an hour on all three wheel speed sensors and we can see the one here on the left front is the one that's getting kind of crazy you rewind it a little bit here but yeah you watch it see we get about six miles an hour before that left front even starts to report so and when it does, it's kind of glitchy until we hit about eight or nine miles an hour. Then it will start reading steady. So our left front is a culprit. That's the reason that it's, you know, kicking on the traction control when we take off. And it's also the cause of the unwanted ABS activation when we roll up to a stop sign. Because we roll up, we're going six miles an hour, except for that left front wheel, as far as the computer's concerned. And then, you know, therefore it kicks on the ABS pump every time we come up to a stop. The one on the right front isn't responding as quickly as the rears, but it's below, you know, three miles an hour when it does it. I doubt that's gonna, you know, cause any issue. Our left front's definitely the main concern here. So using that record function on the scan tool is pretty handy. At least, uh, you know, for situations like that where it's hard to see. Well, it's not hard for me to see, but you know, hold the camera and, and show you guys what's happening as we're driving. We could just record that, come back here and and show it to you. Uh, the typical cause on these is usually rust jacking under the speed sensors. Rust gets on the hub, lifts the speed sensor out, and creates an air gap, and then they don't read quite as 
uh, quickly as they should until you know kind of gets up a little higher speed so what we'll do we'll pick up in here we'll pull that left front wheel we'll see what the speed sensor looks like and see if it's going to cooperate with us if not sometimes it results in replacing the whole hub assembly Peel this caliper off. Need a little more power. Mother of pearl! Oh. Well, at least we know they weren't going to fall off, right? Get a holder, we'll hold that caliper up, pop the rotor off. Looks like relatively brand new pads on this thing. So we're just gonna push it back as far as we're able to. And we'll hang it up here in the spring if we can. There we go. Let me uh, mark that real quick. because we'll be putting this one back on, potentially. Oh boy. Let's see if we can work a miracle. Usually it's a big fat no, and it would help if we had the right size. Oh yeah, first try. Five millimeter. Spin that out. That's where it all goes wrong. Let's get a pair of needle nose. We'll try to wiggle this. This one does have that, I think it looks like that stainless shim underneath it. So maybe, maybe. It's our only hope, Croil. This should only take a half a drop according to the Croil expert. Well, that's way too much. We're gonna give it the benefit of the doubt though. Full, full on douching. We'll let it sit about that long. Open up our slip joints here. Are you kidding me? That cro croil, some good stuff, let me tell you. Actually, let me move this. You guys are kind of in our way. And now that we see that we have a glimmer of hope, let's do this. Get you out here. That way you can see the back of my hand. Let's get a little more coil because it's hung up on the O-ring up under there. So let's try this folks. Let's very gingerly clamp on here with a pair of vice grips just so we have something that we can pry up against. And I'm gonna try trying up against them. We need to grip them a little bit more without breaking the sensor. Now, I don't know if we're gonna get enough grip on there. I don't wanna squeeze it so hard I break it, but. We'll give her a little tighter squeeze there. See if we can't rock it, no. We just gotta be able to get underneath it, which we might have enough room now with a smaller screwdriver. Yes sir, okay, so there it is, old son. Just had to get underneath it. There's our speed sensor. Let me get the uh, stainless steel shim to hit the floor. So there's the shim that goes underneath it. Now I don't know if these were in there just to uh, correct the air gap, you know, the space, or if these were in there in an effort to try to solve the problem that we have. That I don't know. I don't know. So let's get our speed sensor kind of stuck back here uh, the way if we can, like that. And I'll show you the real issue here, folks. This is a real issue. This little green thing right here. No, I'm just kidding. Just wanted to get it out of this little piece of the O-ring. Just a sliver of it. There we go. But it's all this rust buildup right here. So this rust builds up down here 
and then it starts tipping that sensor up, picking it up away from the tone ring that lives down there in the bearing, as you can see down inside there. Hopefully you can see. If not, trust me. But let's plug the hole, clean the rust off, stick that back in, and I'll give you the unlimited limited guarantee that it'll work when we're done. So free tip for you, uh, valve cap. Off your regular old plain old plain old fits in these holes. You can stick it right down inside there. All the way down. And that'll keep all the junk from getting in your trunk in the hole. And then we're gonna scrape off the rust. And we're gonna put it on the file. Get that like that. And you just gotta get it all chipped out of there. These are just our caliper files here. They're real good for getting off the big chunks of rust. There we go. Stand by, folks. Get that little spritz there. She's pretty rough down here at the bottom. So we want to come in with a regular file here if we can a little bit. Just to make darn tooting. Alright, I think we'll be okay. We're going to use the Venturi effect. We're going to blow across it. And now suck the cap out in dirt and blow it all out. You ready? So I lied. Typically it does, but we'll thread back into it. And go like that, usually it sends a little cap flying. But we'll blow across it. Creates a little pressure in there. I'm gonna go clean this up on the whizzy wheel, wire wheel, and then we'll grease her up, stick her back together, and see if it fixed it. Clean the junk. I can't believe this came out. Rarely do we get these suckers out. And the other thing I would caution you on is replacing the wheel speed sensor unless you know what the bearing is. So what I've found, like if we get an aftermarket, let's say it broke, we wanted to get an aftermarket speed sensor for it. Rarely are they the same because there's so many different manufacturers of the wheel speeds or the wheel bearings. It seems they all use different speed sensors. So chances are if it breaks, you're usually ended up buying a uh, you know whole new hub assembly. So. I'm just gonna grease this little guy up here. I'm just putting a little sill glide on it. It should last the rest of this bearing's life. We'll just lube that up a little bit. Stick our metal shim right there again. Get that baby lined up. My fingers wiped off. We'll wiggle it and drive it home. Bump into you. Hold on, stand by. Get your folks lying back up there so you can see. We'll stick the bolt back in it. We'll snug that up, torque it to spec, and then we'll throw our brake back on. And then I guess the other thing you probably should do. Uh, which I didn't show is before you do all this make sure your wheel bearings not loose you know grab your wheel top and bottom because if she's got some chuck and if old chucks living in there it's going to cause the same problem we'll give her a little spritz of fluid film over top of the whole mess line our road back up stick that on there get a wheel nut to hold that baby 
I'm gonna throw the brake caliper on, throw the wheel on, get everything torqued to factory spec, and then we're gonna go for a rip. Almost forgot the camera. Oh, watch your head. Watch your head. We're just gonna look at the front too because that's all it really matters in this situation. Look at that, the left front's working better than the right front now. I'll tell you, it doesn't take much. We knew that right front was falling a little behind, but we'll leave sleeping dogs lie. If it's not gonna cause a problem with unwanted ABS activation or you know, traction control kicking on, we're not gonna sweat it. if we have any ABS activation. And we do not. It was doing it every single stop. So th this one was bad enough uh, that it wasn't intermittent. Sometimes these things can be a little temperamental. Make sure when you're checking to see if the ABS is kick out, make sure you run it up at least 15 miles per hour first before you come to a stop. If you don't, uh, the ABS won't activate. We can see both of them read down at that low speed. However, the one that we clean, that left front, does kick in just a tiny bit faster. Come up here to the next shadow. There we go. And we'll go about that six mile per hour range where it was not reading before, but we can clearly see you know, that it is now, so. Confirmed fix, easy fix, no parts required. So that's it folks, this guy should be happy. We changed his oil and we fixed his unwanted ABS activation. As I mentioned earlier, uh, be ye warned if you're putting in an aftermarket speed sensor, you gotta make darn tootin' that it is the exact, precisely the exact same length as one that you pulled out. And if you broke it getting it out, which they often do, you may not have that measurement. And it may be too long or too short. Those are the two things it could be, or just right. So there's three things it could be. And as you've seen, it doesn't take much rust, a few, a few thousandths underneath that speed sensor, lifting it up off that tone ring to make it not work. Because let's be honest, we didn't take off, you know, copious amounts of rust underneath there. Uh, so, you know, think about that. If you're concerned, you can't get it out, you're not sure about an aftermarket, just replace the hub assembly. Buy the hub, it comes with the, you know, with the speed sensor and, and move on with life. If you do that and you live in the Northeast, pack some grease around that speed sensor, whack her down with some fluid film, it'll last a little longer. It'll at least last the life of the bearing. And that's all I can tell you. The only other thing I can tell you though, is I wanna see in that comment section with your questions, your comments, the concerns, Find us on Insty, the Facebook. You guys know what to do. We're not on TikTok. We don't like that guy. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching. You spying on me? No, I'm waiting. What are you waiting for? Go to the post office. Oh, you can go, girl. I can go. Go, girl. I'm going. You go, girl.